Welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at how to create simple effects in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create generator effects in Final Cut. A generator is a computer-generated graphic, for example, solid colors or textures. It's often full screen and often animated, for example, everything in the backgrounds category, which makes generators very useful for infographics. There's also special elements, for example, numeric sequences, shapes, time code, and placeholders. Let me illustrate what generators are and how they work. This is a background called Float. It's just some generic shapes. They were originally created inside Motion and saved as a background. We can find generators by going up to this icon, twirling up text, and there are generators. When I select backgrounds, these are all full screen, fully animated backgrounds. I mean, there's even more in motion. You can create something in motion and export it. But you have them by as a group, and then you've got categories as you can just look through. I like backgrounds which have got animation, but are darker because it gives us something in the background, but not so bright that it attracts from the text. It gives us animation, which the eye likes, and yet it's dim, which means the text that we put on top of it in an infographic works great. How do we edit it? Just like any other clip. For instance, I'm going to grab Glimmer and drag it right down here, and now we're playing Float, and now we're doing Glimmer. A classic example of when to do this is I want to put text on top of it. So here I've got 3D text that's animated. We'll play it. There we go. That's the 3D custom text that we looked at just a minute ago. And we put it over a different background. See how the background is moving, which your eye loves, but it doesn't detract from the text. And then the text disappears. This is a classic example of how we use generators, and there's lots of different backgrounds to choose from, and there are dozens and dozens of backgrounds inside Motion, which you can always export should you need to. But there's more to a generator than just these full-screen backgrounds, and remember to skim over them to see what the background looks like and whether you like it or not. We also have shapes. Shapes are stored inside the element category. See the word shape. If I highlight the inspector, and go up to where it says Publish Parameters. That's where the generator control is. We have circles and squares and rectangles and diamonds. Let's go to uh, a square. This white dot you see in a lot of effects. You click on the white dot. It allows you to move the effect wherever you want it to go. We can change the size of it using the transform settings, which I'll get to in just a minute. We can determine whether we want to be rounded corners or not. We can change colors of the fill. Say we want it to be green, and we want this to be orange. We want the width to be... Okay, well, that qualifies as really unpleasant. Let's try this. Hmm. Better, maybe. Again, these are all controlled from the far left icon, which is where animation and or settings which are specific to that effect or specific to that generator or specific to that text, which are separate from the inspector effects we're going to talk about in just a minute. Another thing that we can do, in addition to creating really ugly shapes, is that we have a timecode reader. Timecode is also in the elements. And as I play this, notice that the timecode displayed here matches the project timecode. When I select that effect, I can have it match the project timecode, or I can have it display the source timecode. This is a great way to see what the timecode of your source clip is by applying the timecode generator to it. You can then have formatting control, change the size, change the color. We also have counting time codes. We can have it count up or count down. The way the counting time code works is you see the start number and you see the end number. If the start number is smaller than the end number, it counts up. If the starting number is bigger than the ending number, it counts down. And the speed of the counting is based upon the duration of the clip. So here I'm going to have this be like a two-second clip. It's going to fly up to 300. I want to have it be a five-second clip and it counts much more slowly. So the speed of the counting is determined by the duration of the clip. The last element that we have that's worth playing with is a placeholder. 
placeholder allows you to put a shot into your edit. You'll also see this under the edit menu under insert generator placeholder allows you to insert this directly without having to drag it from the generator panel but you can drop this in and say I've got a long shot a medium long shot or a close-up it's a man and a woman or two men or I want it to be a group of four men and I need it to be a medium shot in other words you can use this as sort of a, a fake storyboard you can also determine what you want the background to be Let's go back to our long shot. Oh, we want to put it in an urban environment. Placeholders are also in the elements category of generators. There's one more category I want to quickly talk about in generators. If we go back to generators and go to solids, we have all these solid colors, and yes, we can adjust them, and these solid textures, which I really love. If, for instance, I take grunge, we'll just edit grunge down here, and select it, we actually have a bunch of different textures. I'm going to go with that one, Control T, and the reason this is important is if I take text, and we'll just make this uh, hobo, and we're going to make it really big. Then, at the top of the inspector, which is where we're about to go, notice this thing called blend mode? Change the blend mode to stencil alpha. And what I've just done is I've put that background into the text of the title. So our titles don't have to be pure white or pure colors. I can superimpose the text over a, a texture generator. Blend modes give us so much power. I've got an entire webinar devoted to blend mode. I'm just going to illustrate where they are. This allows us to combine textures and colors from multiple layers based upon all these different settings. And opacity allows us to make something translucent to almost invisible and everywhere in between. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on how to create simple effects in Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 225. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, in-depth and easy to view. Plus, premium members can now access sample media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.